Welcome to the Innovation Squadcast. If you are looking for a podcast about instructional strategies enhanced by technology, you came to the right place. In our conversations, we will talk with tech experts, share ideas, and strategies to help you build your toolbox with tools that you can use in your class immediately. Welcome to the Innovation Squadcast. Today, we are talking tech tools you can use. In today's episode, um, we're going to talk about all different types of tech tips, tricks, tools. We're going to look at gaming features, student creation, shortcut options, um, you know, really just to make sure that you are up on your tech fluency game. Uh, we will share numerous ideas on how teachers and students can be more efficient and creative when, you, when using technology. But before we get started, let's pause for this week's quick tech tip. Here's a great quick tip in Google Slides. They just updated that you can follow someone in a presentation. So I'm gonna show you as an example. If I, the teacher, am presenting, I can have the students click on my image at the top right-hand side, and then it'll say following. So now, as I talk and I click through my presentation, it will also change on their device. Now, this isn't something that students can't control. So if I'm a student and I click on a different slide, then it will stop the following of the teacher. But all I have to do is click back on that icon at the top and it'll go back to whatever slide they are presenting. So it's a nice way to follow along. Another benefit would be if you were working with a coworker on a presentation or just planning, you could kind of have a conversation about what you guys are going to do per slide. And you're always on the same page without really having to try and focus on that little icon that's on the slide. That's sometimes hard to see where they are, especially in a bigger presentation. So let us know how you use this quick tip. All right. Hope you enjoyed that tech tip. So, you know, we did top uh, 25 tech tools at the beginning of the year. It was probably one of our most watched mm -hmm. um, episodes. And so we thought it'd be a good idea to kind of reboot it a little bit. So there's some, some things in here that are kind of um, a little bit repetitive, but we also brought in some extra stuff as well and um, and kind of were able to highlight some you know different things that also could be used inside the classroom whenever uh, possible. If you were interested in that top um, 25 Tech Tools podcast, you get in our show notes, uh, which is found in our description window um, link there. It's also found in our BIA, BCSD Connect Schoology um, place. You can find the show notes. You can find the old podcast. You can find in the old podcast. You can also join the BCSD Tech Connection mm -hmm. um, with the code as well inside of our show notes. So definitely check those out. So, you know, putting this together, one of the first things that I was looking at was gaming, right? Sometimes people, you know, we, we think that everyone knows all the different gaming websites that are, mm -hmm. I don't mean gaming, like as far as video gaming, but like the games <laughs> options, right? The fun stuff. Yeah, the fun stuff that, you know, that you can use. And sometimes, you know, everybody knows about certain ones, but maybe there's other ones you don't know about. Um, and so what kind of games um, are out there that students can use to, you know, provide some kind of review or teachers can use to, you know, let students review some certain things? So there's a bunch of them. Um, it just depends on like if you're elementary, secondary or primary. Um, I'll start with like the primary ones. Look It is really good and Kahoot is really good for your lower kiddos. Um, then you can go to a step up and you can go into Gim Kit and that's more for your elementary and secondary kids. But Look It. Um, and I use Look It with my high school kids and yeah, they loved it too. So. Them, you can use them all around, but sure. I just feel like easier friendlier with the younger ones um it's we'll super get, they competitive get too. yes yes they yes. get so competitive yes they do and yeah. all the way through high school i yeah. mean i taught Absolutely. seniors and juniors and they loved book it and we used it all the time Especially and everybody's the racing. on different things they have different games yep. but they're still learning the same thing same thing with kahoot I always tell people kahoot and gim kit are essentially the same thing it's just how the kids learn it or how the kids choose to play sure. it if that makes sense absolutely yeah what's great about booklet it has a lot of different types of games that they can get into yes. 
Um, we use the racing one a lot. You can set up mm -hmm. how many questions you need, uh, or how many questions, you know, get you to the end and then they can do certain things inside of that one. So I really like that you have some, there's, and there's different option games inside of there as well. Um, I know you use quizzes a yes, lot as well, and I, I use, use quizzes, quizzes a lot as well. And so what would you like about quizzes? I think what I liked about quizzes, because at the time, Kahoot was super popular. And yeah. then some of the kids just got to the point where it's like, okay, we're doing another one. Yeah. So we, we, like to, music. Yeah. Yeah, we like to switch it up. But yeah. then I also worked with students um, that may have been, they weren't the best at taking tests or being quick with their answers and right. quizzes is one that you can have a little bit more self-paced yep. so then everyone can have some success you don't have to be the fastest sure. so i did like that feature in quizzes so. yeah quizzes i like that you could turn off that and i also sometimes would just put uh, quizzes up and and tell students you can take it as many times you want to get whatever grade that yep. you want mm -hmm. so there's that option of being able to repeat things um, and then it's real easy to be able to kind of take a, a quizzes and make it your own. You can mm -hmm. grab questions from other people's quizzes. That's a flashcard based kind of looking. There's a flashcard version of one of them, right? There is. I think. I think they all have one that's yeah. kind yeah, of like a flashcard. Yeah, Quizlet's probably the one that's most flashcard based. That's what I'm, okay. um, uh, whereas in quizzes, is you know you got your questions, a lot of multiple choice questions right. that you can bring in, um, and it's so easy to add. You know, just pull from somebody else's and pull from like I would make. Like I would put it in my topic and then I would pull from a bunch of different quizzes and find the questions that mm -hmm. I wanted um, and then let students, you know, complete yeah. it that way. So that's a really great way to review. So. And you could do feedback in those too. That was one thing in quizzes. You could do um, different feedback depending sure. on their answers. Um, so that way they are encouraged while they're doing it. And then all of them have an anal analyzing feature yes. where you can look at the data. Yeah. So then yes. it's not just a matter of having fun playing a game, yeah, right. but you can also get to look and see how yeah. you did and uh, maybe purposes. grading and then maybe help helping small groups, right. Correct. Um, seeing who might need a little extra help. Yep, and then those work pretty well without the paid version. Mm -hmm. I know GimKit um, is pretty limited in the free version. You right. get a certain amount of games. I think they've opened it up recently where yes. most of the games, you were looking at some research with that. Yeah, yeah that, it looked like um, as of like November last year, they added where you could do all the different types of games. Right. There were just some features um, that you had to pay for. Sure. Um, but for the most part, you can actually use right. it now for the free yeah. version because before you really couldn't do a lot with the free version. So it kind of turned right. people off from trying it right. because you don't want to have to pay. Yeah, for I know it. the school that we were at, we always got the school, um, the school, the paid for the school version. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't that bad. Um, and it opens up a lot more resources oh, yeah. and access inside of it, like anything that, you know, requires you it. But, teams and share. Right. Mm -hmm. But um, I know that there are, again, you can still do it with the free version. And then we use Quizlet. I like Quizlet a lot, especially for vocab. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that I probably saw my quickest growth. We would play a game called Quizlet Live. Yeah. Um, and it would use the vocab and they would form teams. Mm -hmm. And then like they would see, they'd each have their own term and then the, the, term would the, the definition would pop up and then they'd have to communicate like all right what is that term and um i mean i would see the cr the quickest growth we'd play like five times and by the end of that fifth time i mean the kids knew that definition right. um very well and right. it was very very um impressive to see so quizlet is another one that you can do a lot with and then quizlet live was a nice little game that we like to play and with that one so kids can create their own mm -hmm. too and i love that because even my daughter who's now in college she still uses quizlet yep. for practicing for tests and things like that right yep. the flash code option of mm -hmm. your flashcard person a lot of them already create for you yep. um and so you don't really have to you know get into you know um trying to create a whole nother thing that's already been created for you. Right. You're sitting here talking about that, and I just typed a new one up in the show notes, uh, Pear Deck Flashcard yep, Factory. Deck. Yep, that's another um, good one. If you've never done the Flashcard Factory, let me know. I'll be more than happy to come to your school and give you a tutorial. This is so much fun. We actually hosted one at the Innovation Summit, and we laughed and laughed and laughed. Um, I'll link it in the show notes, but it is so much fun. So the students create um your you create a flashcard set one student draws one student lists the term for that you can even use it for math i've used it several different ways from elementary to secondary but it is so much fun and then they go through a stage of factories or the worker stage where you have to approve it quality mm -hmm. control and all that um definitely worth the try if not do it in a staff pd and really have fun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it can be yeah, fun. all these are definitely good for any oh, kind of staff yes. PD, quick mm -hmm. little icebreakers and things like that that you yeah. can do that a lot of them are already created for you. So 
The next thing that um, we were going to talk about is this more student creation mm -hmm. stuff, which again, you know, in the top 25 tech tools we did before, we talked about them. So some of these are going to be rebooted. And then we also find some other new ones in there as well. Two of my favorite that are rebooted every time, and that's Storyboard, that, and Book Creator. Mm -hmm. um, I bring them up all the time just because of what they can do, how right. kids can use them, how kids like them, how user-friendly they are. Um, they are just one of those things that, you know, storyboard that the, the free version, you can do a lot with mm -hmm. it. You know, really the paid version allows you to create classes and assignments and things like that. But as far as just a student creation tool, I think both of these have, um, you know, ability to do that. Book creator, the, the one thing that the paid version gives you that's really nice, it's a collaboration feature mm -hmm. that is turned off when you have the um, free version, but you get 40 bucks. And uh, the kids love making them and, and using them. And I, and I found that they just from all levels, all the way up, can use Book Creator to do different things with mm -hmm. it. And teachers can use these as well, which um, we've taught, we've used as well to be able to instruct and create lessons based off of them. Mm -hmm. So, so if you've never heard of Storyboard, that is very similar to Pixton. Mm -hmm. um, you were actually telling me that the other day. I've always used Pixton instead of Storyboard, so that's another connection. If you've never heard of that one. Mm -hmm. And then Story Jumper is another um, book creator tool. It's a more kind of elementary, um, you know, uh, and second and lower secondary um, view. It has already like pre created like scenes and pre a lot of things are more pre created inside of Story Jumper, whereas in book creators, like full adaptability, book creator works inside of Canva. Um, Storyboard Jumper has already really got some pre created things in there that makes the book creation a little bit easier, but it's also very editable as well. So it's just another, um, if you know, your kids are tired of book creator, Storyboard, Story Jumper is another one that you can create books inside of as well. So I haven't even used that one. I'll have to check it yeah, out. It's a great one. It's, and we did link on the show notes yep. um, the freemium kind of version so that way you can see for Storyboard that and book creator um, before you jump into it to see what sure. the limitations right. are. So that yep. way you know, okay, yeah, I can use the free version. Sure. Uh, all right, Pam, Google Suite. Let's talk oh, about yes, the waffle. I love my Google. Yes. <laughs> you know, there's all kinds of, just sometimes it's good to be a good, a good refresher on exactly. what's in that Google Suite yeah. um, that students can use to create and teachers can use to create as well. Right. So. And I, I've noticed that kids are using Google Drawings a lot more now, especially since we've been in schools showing teachers uh, yeah. and kids how to sure. use the laser cutter because yep. um, they do a lot of their basic designs in Google Drawings and before they even put it into the program we use for the laser cutter. Sure. So Google Drawings is a great place. And there's a lot of lessons that you can do along with that. Yep. Um, and then integrating that even into Google, Google Slides. Yep. Um, I think I use all of them on a daily basis between yep. Google Drawings, Google Slides, and of course Canva. Yep. Canva isn't on there, but because yeah. we talk about Canva all, all the time. time yeah. um, but <laughs> I feel like it. we can't multiple episodes. <laughs> <laughs> we can't get through any of these without mentioning no, Canva at least no. once. So um, no, but that's a great feature, and it's really easy. Even if it's the uh, um, primary grades, they sure. can they can learn how to use the shapes and the word art uh, to be able to create their yeah. own things. And I love Google Sites. Um, you know, getting students to create websites, free version mm -hmm. inside of our Google Suite. Um, you can put portfolios there. They yes. can upload things. They can create projects, or they can just create a website based off of the information that you want right. them to create, mm -hmm. just to give them another way to, to demonstrate that mastery as well. Slides, and then I think Google Sheets is definitely an underutilized that we forget about the data sets that you can create inside mm -hmm. of it, the graphs and different things that you can mm -hmm. create inside of that. Um, so just a good idea to remember your your Google Suite and uh, and your Waffle and, and let your kids you know explore that a little bit as well. So Like the pixel art, that was one that we were yep. trying to explore yeah. more with Google Sheets. Yep. Um, so we'll have to link something to that as sure. far as if you want to yep. try it out. Um, another one that's out there is CoSpaces. CoSpaces is one that um, that my high school students used a lot um, to create 3D, basically, um, representations of different things. The biggest one we would do is as museum projects. Um, they would create this digital 3D museum that you could walk through. Um, they'd either be on presidents or we did one based off of some kind of movement like the civil rights movement um, that you could walk through and that there's art, there's there's videos, there's audio, there's so many things you can do with it. It is one of those that it is like the paid version is, is kind of necessary to really right. get the full options inside of the let your students create. Um, but uh, there is just so much that they can do and really, you know, be super dynamic and create a project with mm -hmm. side of co spaces. And again, it's one of those things reach out to one of us. Um, and we it, it'll look daunting at the beginning, mm -hmm. but we can come in and help, you know, kind of facilitate the learning on a lot mm -hmm. of these things. So 
they used that for one of the innovation summits. They did. That's where I got. I got. Actually, I, I saw it and I was like, "Ooh, I could," you know. And then I got the idea. And then I brought it to my kids. My kids uh -huh. came up with the idea of the museum, and then they ran all away with it. And um, we created like each team. They had a graphics design team, a research team, mm -hmm. a video and audio team, and then they all worked together to create this these museums. And they were um, one of the best things we ever did. That's so, cool by far. You absolutely. could do that in middle school too. I think yeah, middle I think school so. could also yeah. do that. Yeah. Yep. Um, have you guys ever used Powtoon at all? Powtoon's another really great video creation that, uh, that, that is we used yes. a lot. Um, that has all these different templates. It has little graphics, cartoons, whiteboards. So another, you know, just a really fun way that students can create different. Some of my favorite, um, you know, quick little video lessons were done with my students using Powtoon. So, so if you're struggling, I feel like that one's really the... Yep the template based one sure it's you. got all kinds of templates you can yes. upload your own slideshows in there and then kind of jazz them up a little bit as well which is nice so. yes um we talked about thing link thing link is just another place that you can just put a lot of different mm -hmm. um you know different like audio video text and on a picture and let the students kind of be able to um, interact inside of mm -hmm. something which is really nice um, and so ThingLink is another place that you've, you you got one picture that you want to use, but you want to be able like to find multiple places. Yeah, it's like yeah. an interactive poster. Yeah, um, used to use that for um, um, Glogster, but the Glogster went away, which oh, I was really surprised yeah, when cool. I was actually doing the research for this. I clicked on it and like it's gone. I'm like, okay, there it goes. <laughs> so um, I, I do like ThingLink for when you do have that one visual that you continue to use, but right. then you don't necessarily want a presentation. Right. You just want it to be interactive. It right. is it is helpful for sure. that. Uh, and then we have two online voice recorders. Um, you want to talk about? Uh, yes, Vocaroo. Um, yep. That's probably the one that I use all the time. Just if I need an audio or even when we're talking about like podcast intros, yep. things like that, where you just need a quick tool to be able to do just the audio, um, just go to Vocaroo and you can create a quick video or not video, a quick audio. Um, and then uh, we didn't realize until today when we were playing with it that you can actually upload um, an audio file. So if you nice. have one on your computer or something like that, that you want to add, um, then it creates a link. You can create a QR code. Um, it saves to your drive, things yep. like that. So nice. it's a, a nice place to go. it's not too then. intimidating. Like, no. It's very it's simple. simple. Like, yeah. Literally click here to record. Yeah. Right. It's kind of the same online voice recorder as what we've always yep. used. Same thing. It's right web-based. Mm -hmm. You just click it. It mm -hmm. records your audio. I know a lot of my students, we did a little micro podcasting. Yeah. They would use online voice recorder, insert that audio into the slides right. um, and be good to go there. So. Another one that we highlight a lot, and again, just to get people is SketchUp. We've talked about it on, in the ClassLink episode as well, but it's something that, that students can use. It looks very intimidating mm -hmm. at first. Contact your ILCs. We'll come in. We'll teach your kids kind of how to navigate through it. I'm actually going to try it with a third grade class in oh, SketchUp. Fine. Yeah, so I'll let you know how that goes. Ah, but yeah. I've done it as little, you know, haven't done that little yet, but... Um, the teacher's confident that the kids are going to be able to pick it up. They'll so. probably teach you. Yeah, probably. <laughs> you, you end up finding that the kids know just as much as we do as well. So um, we also talk about flip. Flip is another one that you again, everybody yep. knows that one. Yeah, it's still really hard one. to say. Flip, I, the flip, I flip grid is yeah. just okay. So you I even have to go grid. in and check. I'm like, what is flip? Yeah, they changed oh, the name on us. Yeah. <laughs> But it's still yep. a great tool. Yep. And then you know, people also, I think, don't even know that Schoology has a kind of version of Flip as far yep. as if you want just a real quick audio video, mm -hmm. you know, answer from your kids, they can submit an audio yep. video inside of Schoology as well. So you don't always have to go to Flip, but Flip adds a lot more extra, you know, mm -hmm. features in there yeah. that were as in, it adds you know, the sure. Yeah. Um, but if you just wanted a quick audio video um, response from your kiddos, just use maybe that Schoology submission tool as well. So we use that also for the um, the summit yep. one yeah. year yep. because we had to be virtual. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it was a way that everyone it, it was fun. I think we should do it again. Yep. <laughs> um, how about Animaker? You guys ever used Animaker? I've never used it. No, that. my kids oh. actually brought. This is where again allowing my kid, kids to have like the freedom of choice and mm -hmm. different things. One of those things. A lot of these I would learn from them. And Animaker is one of those. Um, it creates little tiny cartoons and, and uh, you can make little games and um, basically create your own little videos that have all these predetermined, cool. all already animated characters to be able to explain kind of whatever it is you're wanting them to explain. And so um, Animaker was one that I would, you know, that my kids would show up every once in a while oh, when I gave them choice, nice. um, like, you know, storyboard that book creator or Animaker or something like that. And when they would create their projects, um, this is one that they kind of tended to a lot as well. I so like it, the interface is kind of like Canva. So it's, yeah. it's an easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really um, easy to use. Um, and my kids would use it. We're and talking about so. it. I'm standing looking. <laughs> like, oh, let me see. Yes. Yep. If yep. you're not watching, you're listening. We're all looking at it right now. <laughs> 
Um, and then wiser.me is another one that um, is, is a, it's an interactive worksheet, you know, um, place that you can, you know, use and find a lot of really yes. cool worksheets with. So did you guys ever use wiser me? I have. So when I was in um, the school as a tech coach, I did wiser.me for digital citizenship. Yep. So instead of printing all of the copies as artifacts for the kids, I did wiser.me and pushed it out that way. And that's how the kids filled out their sure. responses. Yep. Um, really cool. You can create them, make them sets. Yep. Uh, you can link them to whatever. And it has already templates and things yeah, already created. Templates. So um, you can make it public. You can keep it to yourself, but super easy. If you just don't want all the paper trail, it's right there that you can still yep. grade. And then a podcast will, uh, is another one that's it's coming out. It's a podcasting basically oh, website nice. that is web based that you can do um, create little mini podcasts and do different. It has music already, some templates. It's one of those ones that you know it has a lot, very limited as far as the free version. The paid version has going to open up more things, um, but it's a place that they can create um, podcasts with some more pizzazz. Um, but you can always use again, like we're using Screencastify right now. You can mm -hmm. always use that with your podcasting or any of the online voice recorders, but podcast will does have a little extra layer to it as well. Um, so if you're interested in doing some pod, you know, podcast, giving students that option. And then you guys ever heard of Vokey? No, but I'm on here right now. Yeah, Vokey is yes. a really cool. It's actually um, been around for a while. It has been around for surprising. a while. And my kids, we would always do like a Vokey project or... Um, I did when I would, I flipped my class, I would do like one of the options the kids would have as far as getting materials, one is video lectures. And one of the video, like the Abraham Lincoln video lecture I did I as say, Abraham Lincoln. Right yeah, now. I did as Abraham Lincoln. So it was like Abraham Lincoln talking with my voice inside the video lecture. Oh, um, yeah. So you can like basically, chatter picks, but on yep, the computer. Yeah. Basically you add voice to, um, this, and then they can also type responses and it can be like a computer generated version, yeah, but it's okay. just a fun way to, you know, make presentations a little bit more entertaining and different. You oh, can create, this is fun. Yep, you can create oh, slideshows. <laughs> Watch out. Yep. You can create little slideshows inside of there as well and little PowerPoints and, um, but there's lots of different things you can do oh, inside fun. of Vokey. So, oh, this is cool. Yeah, yep. the kids get they get really into that. Uh -oh, and we're gonna get stuff. off on a tangent here yeah. if we start playing. <laughs> I know. And then the last kind of section we talked about is sometimes you just don't know about certain shortcuts. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and so I wanted to throw in some last minute kind of really quick shortcuts in there as well. Um, I like again the snipping tool shortcut. A lot of people didn't know about that, but if you go Shift Windows Key S, it pulls mm -hmm. up your snipping tools automatically. Um, so that if you need to grab something from your screen, you can do that. So I was showing a teacher that guys... the other day. <laughs> yeah. I was too. I was like, yeah. you're never going to believe what yeah. Jimmy told us to do. <laughs> yeah, Watch this. Yep. What other what shortcuts do you guys that, find out there? The display sharing that we have on there, the yep. Windows key, and then Pete. That's yep. super helpful, especially yes. when you are using a smart board and you've got you're attached to a docking station. Yep. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you can't see where where anything is. Right. That Windows P just yep. Windows P. <laughs> it then, allows you to duplicate or uh -huh. send your right. screen. Yeah. Right. And then it's really nice sometimes you talk about that, but then your screen's blank. Yep. Uh -huh. And that's a lot of times if you do the Windows P, you're like, oh, that's because yeah. it's not on display. Exactly. Sure. Yeah, it's a good uh, a good trick. Yep. Yes. Did you know you can pull your emojis up with the um, Windows key plus the period sign? That pulls up all of your emojis. That if you ever need to add emojis to anything, you have that option. Um, and then when you're in an actual web browser, instead of hitting like back and forward, if you just hit like Alt and the arrows, it'll move you back and forward. Um, it's funny, through I've your never history. used that. I've never yeah. used that yeah. before. So you can, you can move, you know, you can go back and forth mm -hmm. inside of your web-based thing. Um, and then the one that I actually learned about doing some, I just put in like top 20 tech or, right. um, shortcuts was window snap. I had no idea that you could snap windows using the windows key yes. and arrows to snap your tabs where you want them to go. I had no idea. I didn't either. That's um, nice when you only yeah. have one screen. Yeah, if you only have yes. one screen, you need to work that double. Um, the Windows key and arrow will snap that tab over where you want it to go. So you can snap one one to the left arrow and then snap another one to the right side. And then you've got your two um, ready to go. So and that restore tabs, that the is restore my favorite. Oh tabs. my goodness, yes. I use that one all the time. Yeah. Control shift T, if you close all your yes. tabs, mm -hmm. just hit control shift T, all your tabs will come back mm -hmm. open. You're not gonna lose uh, much of your progress. Especially when you're touch so. screen and you're, sitting, yep. you're trying to exit out of yep. one and yep. the other one goes. And yep. you close the wrong one and you have no idea which one yes. because you have so many
many open right. if you're like I am. With yep. That one's on repeat. Like I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Control shift T is definitely yes. one. And then one last one is that if you got to walk away from computer and you can't wait for it to time out, like you need to lock it immediately. If you just hit the Windows key and L, it immediately locks your computer um, so that nobody can get into it and it would oh, require nice. your password back into it yes. um, to get it. So if you need to quickly lock your computer, so you have that option as I well. I do have so. to add one because sure. on a Chromebook, I think um, there are so many keyboard shortcuts on a Chromebook. There are, yes. When you use the control alt question mark, okay. it pops up the entire list oh, of all nice. the on keyboard shortcuts. And so it's on a Chromebook. Book, Chromebook yeah, we'll add only. it to the list. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's just control alt question mark. Control alt question mark yes. on your Chromebooks. Uh -huh. we'll, we'll let you see all the different yeah, short It pops up yeah. all of them and then you can search what you're looking for. That's oh, awesome. Yeah. That one's good. I know yep. that for my teachers, I used to give them a little printout. Uh -huh. It's always handy to have all this. All right. So we hope you enjoyed all these tech tools that you can use. Again, reach out to your ILCs. If there's something that we left off mm -hmm. here, definitely email us so that we can make sure we get them into the next episode. Um, and as always, we have the Squadcast PD. Go to We have a link inside the show notes. It'll take you to Unified Talent, register. And then there's a Google form you fill out after you listen to two different episodes. Um, fill out a quick Google form reflection. Right. You get an hour of credit. Um, I think this is our 14th episode. So right now you can get up to seven hours of credit. Yeah. Maybe times that over a couple of years. You can I'm definitely with traffic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Make make use of your time in the yes. car. Definitely make use of your time in the car. We we appreciate everybody listening. And then we got again links to old podcasts. And then there's also in the BCSD Tech Connection, there's now a podcast page that has mm -hmm. all the podcasts with the uh, video show notes and the maybe we can um, go in and fill out that because we're yeah. learning as we go too. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, I think we all learned out we a lot. We always from, learn from each we other. Do. Yeah, we always learn a lot from each other, which is what this is all about. So, yeah. really appreciate you guys being here. Appreciate everybody watching and listening. All right, bye, bye. bye.